Okay, our bird is now done with its bath. Um, you can see the level actually went down quite a bit. And that's simply because everybody is now hydrated. They're not like a frozen mass of, well, chicken sticks. I mean, it, there's... Well, they actually can flex and they can move around. And they're reducing volume quite a bit. They've been washed two or three times because... Um, when they put these things in the freezer packages, man, they get inundated with all kinds of broth, and ugh, I don't want to deal with that crap. But anyway, let's see. High technology, um, basically got our marinade, so essentially we just add the marinade. No great science involved. Um, you can see there's actually quite a bit of liquid there, so all of our guys are now getting well covered. But what I want to do is I want to make sure everybody is getting a bath. So I'm just going to give it a quick, easy stir. <coughs> Excuse me. Give it a quick, easy stir. Nothing real wild and crazy, but just want to make sure everybody's in full contact with the marinade. Um, now, these guys are actually going to probably whiten up a little bit because just like when you're making ceviche and um, you're dealing with citrus, citrus partially, quote-unquote, cooks whatever it's in. So it's actually kind of cool. So, um... Half the cooking process is actually going to be done by the citrus. Now, of course, because this is bird, and you never, ever eat a oh, medium rare, uh, uh, slightly other than completely cooked bird, this guy is going to go in the grill, on the grill, and um, it's going to get itself a good old time cooking up. Now, um, yes, I know, my marinade... Well, let me get a little better view here. My marinade is not exactly... Yellow anymore. No, that's because it's got the, the Worcestershire in there. That's because it's got the teriyaki in there. And, um, well, it's now mixing it up with the birdage. Good times. So, um, I'm now going to take a food run with Mrs. Dude, and we're going to get some, uh, well, more ingredients. And I'll be mixing up that uh, buffalo, oh, oh man, uh, buffalo wing sauce, which is Good shiznit. And, of course, I'll be mixing up that lovely, tasty, yummy satay sauce. I am such a sucker for ethnic stuff. I just, I love it. It's great stuff, man. Look at the recipes online and see if you find one you like. Adjust the heat level. And, um, hell, experiment. I mean, I'm probably mixing up three or four different uh, ethnic classes with, hell, anything I make. It's good stuff. Be adventurous. Go on the Internet. Find these recipes experiment. I mean, it's the only way you're going to figure out how you know how to cook, how to figure out how to cook, learn how to cook, and, of course, you have the glorious explosions of failure, but you sometimes succeed. Good times. Alright, so Bird's doing its thing, and I guess I need to be doing my thing for further sauces. Um, you saw me do the honey mustard? Well, I mean, how hard is it to do the teriyaki? It's pretty easy. I simply just fill the bottle back up and that's teriyaki. I had two other sauces in mind, and I went online and did some download and played around, and I found um, two that are going to work perfect. One's a buffalo wing sauce. The other is going to be a, um, a Thai peanut sauce. Oh, man. I, I, I found three different versions, and, um, well, I think I found a combination of two that are probably going to work better. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply play around, and you're going to use part of Tyler Florence's version part of somebody else's version, and cues from somebody else's version. But, first, let's do that buffalo wing sauce. It's really, really easy. I mean, there's only a few minor ingredients. Um, not real involved, but you got to do it right. I mean, essentially what you have in there is, of course, butter, uh, and of course, hot sauce. Now, they say Frank's, and um, I've tried most of the hot sauces on the planet, Okay, I haven't tried them all because probably my, well, my ass would fall off. But, um, I can tell you for a fact, there's differences. I mean, there's huge, huge differences between, um, Tabasco Chipotle, Tabasco Green, um, Tabasco Red, Cholula, um, Dave's Insanity Sauce. I mean, there's so many different varieties of hot sauce now. It is ridiculous. But, what I've found in this recipe they recommend works and it's very simple it's just Frank's Red Hot and it's got the taste there is something that's just very unique about how they do this they got the taste it tastes different than Tabasco it tastes different than Cholula 
and it's what I'm going to use. So first off, I need to come up with a half a cup of butter, and if you read a stick of butter, it tells you all your measurements, so no great involvement there. You simply just, well, you read the stick. They say essentially half the stick is a quarter cup. Um, they say a quarter cup for this. You know what? I'm going to do a full cup, simply because uh, this bottle is 12 ounces. Um, this bottle will obviously hold a pretty good quantity, and um, you know what? It's Christmas time. If people eat more butter, is it really a bad thing? I don't think so. So anyway, um, let me get my stuff all done here, and of course it is unsalted because there's going to be tons of salt and other things, and you really don't need to add tons and tons and tons and tons of salt because basically what's in hot sauce? Hot sauce is essentially um, cayenne peppers, distilled vinegar, water, salt, and garlic powder. It's got the salt. You don't need to add more salt on top of salt because pretty soon all you're tasting is salt. Okay, butter is now melted. Um, got to add the garlic. Now, if you don't have one of these, just get yourself one of these. I mean, these things are such a time saver. It's a garlic press. What you got there is a bunch of holes in the bottom. A plunger basically squishes them down and, oh man, it makes life so easy. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop my heat a bit so I don't scorch my garlic. And uh, I'm just going to squeeze it on in there. Well, the nice thing is it basically rices it and really just macerates all snot out of it because when it comes time to put it in sauces and stuff, you don't want big honking pieces of garlic getting in your way and just making your sauce not good. I mean, it's just, it takes away from it, it diminishes it, and uh, it's just not good. Don't do that. Now, in terms of the sauce, it calls for two cloves. I'm going to go a little heavy um, because I can. So, uh, I'm going to use way too much garlic. <coughs> Give me, just like Emerald says, use entirely too much garlic. So, what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to just keep adding until it, quote unquote, looks right. So, I'm going to think along the lines of getting there that we're probably pretty close to getting there. Now, you do sometimes have it getting fibrous and hanging up on the bottom. So, you just basically just snip it off. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my spatula and uh, get it all incorporated, get it to pick up that lovely garlic flavor. And I don't want to scorch it, so I'm going to keep my temperature down. Um, after a bit, I'm going to add my onion. Mm. This is already smelling very fragrant. It definitely has picked up the garlic essence, and that's good times. Mm, garlic yumminess. Mm. Add some to your sauce. It's good stuff. Besides, who doesn't like garlic? Okay, our garlic has picked up some lovely color, so it is time to add the onion. They called for a big honking amount, and I didn't really like the way that looked, so I changed the amounts, and uh, I'm now going to incorporate the onion. I'm going to let it brown up as well. I'm keeping the temperature on my butter very, very low so I don't scorch things. Uh, garlic will burn in an instant if you don't attend to it thusly. Be very careful with your garlic, and don't burn it, otherwise it's just not good. And if it isn't good, why are you going to bother cooking it in the first place? Don't do that. Mmm, the onion's starting to smell pretty good as well. Yummy. Okay, we have browned up. We have gotten very fragrant. And um, everybody is well established with each other. It is time for the hot sauce. Now, they call for a quarter cup of butter, so I want a half a cup of butter. They said a, a half a cup of sauce, so I went with a full cup of sauce. So let's make everybody join forces and make that lovely butter hot sauce combination. Mm, I'm not a saucier, I'm not a sous chef, but I can fake it if given the opportunity. So essentially, we're just going to mix our stuff up and get everybody all incorporated. And um, the nice thing is, is if you keep this warm, it's not going to re-solidify. And it is looking a heck of a lot like buffalo wing sauce. And um, what's it smell like? Let me grab a small sniffer. Oh, it is definitely smelling like buffalo wing sauce. Mm-mm, good times. Well, there's another sauce down. I'm going to put that in the bottle when it cools and on to the sate sauce. Mmm, yummy. Make yourself some buffalo wing sauce. Good times. All right, which now brings us to the sauté sauce. Got my non-reactive stainless steel bowl. Have a all-natural creamy peanut butter, and um, 
There'll be the guys going, oh, dude, that stuff looks nasty. Well, you know what? If you go to Thailand and you're cooking with their peanut butter, it looks a hell of a lot like this because all they do is take the peanut, run it through the grinder, and that's what they're cooking with. So it says basically measure out a cup, and I'm going to think that's pretty close to correct, so I'm going to do that and get back to you. Okay, so we got our stuff dished out. Not the easiest thing to measure. I did it by weight. Now, in this cup, I've got, they call for quarter cup of low-sodium soy sauce. Adds too much. I went with about two ounces or so. Um, they said uh, two tablespoons dark brown sugar. I went with honey. It's easier. It's easy to measure out. So I'm going to add all this stuff up, incorporate it, and when I come back, we'll figure out our spice level. And um, there's some other stuff that needs to go in there, too. Mmm, yummy, yummy. I love me some steak sauce. Okay, we got our first ingredients all incorporated. Um, got to give it some lemon. Got to give it some lime. Got to give it some citrus. So I'm simply going to do it the easy way. That's right. Two tablespoons of lime juice because it just seems to spark it up. It gives it a better flavor. And Oops, oops, I'm a little messy in that regard. All right, now they say to use a... Um, uh, a sandball red chili paste. You know what? The last time I went to a Thai grocery store was about the 12th of never. So what am I going to use? You know it. You love it. Sriracha. Sriracha is just... Oh, mommy. It is just... Well, if you haven't tried it, try it. It is just that flipping good. I'm going to go with about a tablespoon and change. I can always reserve more heat for later to adjust. So I'm not going to throw all of it in right now. Not good. Don't do that. You can always adjust later on. It's hard to take it back out. Don't do that to yourself. Mmm. Yummy. Okay, anytime you're going to throw something at a party, you probably should know what you're going to be getting into. So, Mrs. Dude and I, we did a test batch yesterday, and um, I think it came up a little short. Not now it won't. Oh, no. I'm going to throw some garlic at it. Very Thai. Very Asian. Those guys, man, they just love cooking with garlic. You look at most of your Chinese recipes, you look at most of your, um, oh, hell, pretty much all your Pan-Asian stuff, they use a huge quantity of garlic. Why? Because it's good. Um, I'm going to leave it raw. If it lands in the bottom of the bottle, you know, it basically doesn't get much actually squirted out the tube. Am I going to cry? No, because what's happening here is... All that lovely garlic juice and all that lovely garlic essence is going into the mix. That's right. It's going to get into the bottle, and, of course, it will get itself into solution because this is going to be sitting at least overnight before the um, Christmas party that I'm making all this stuff for. Um, I still have yet to cook the chicken, but I don't want to kill myself with prep time, so I want to have everything pretty much mise en place. Um, that would mean everything in its place, and every place has its thing, uh, from the, uh, well, the CIA, the Culinary Institute of America. Somebody gave me a heads up on that one. Somebody, ba somebody basically said, thanks for using the phrase. It's a good phrase. Well, anyway, I'm going to mix all this up, get it incorporated, give it a taste, and adjust my heat level, adjust my lime, and adjust everything else in terms of what I think it should taste like. Never, ever put anything on the table without tasting it. Watch all the cooking shows. That's always what screws them. They throw something on the table and they go, so um, when you prepared this, did you taste this? And the guy goes, um, no, I didn't. And they go, why not? Don't do that to yourself. Taste it. Adjust. Yum. All right, folks, we basically got ourselves 24 hours of, uh, well, marination on the birdage. And you can see the birdage has definitely, well, it's changed color. It's gotten kind of translucent. Oh, well, it's turned whiter. It, basically, what that means is it's partially cooked by mm, that yummy goodness known as citrus. Citrus actually does some pretty cool stuff when you introduce it to food. And, oh, hell, let, let's see what it looks like in the grill. Mmm. You got a nice savory mm -mm 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 thing going on. Um, let me shift over here a little bit. I know I'm kind of trying to do things freehand, and it that always works so good. Uh, let's give a quick flip to see what we got. Ooh, yummish. Ooh, a little sticky. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Get a little bit of grill marks on there. Yeah, it's kind of doing what it needs to do, and it's starting to get yummy. Mm. Well, I'm going to keep on going on. I'll get this all knocked out. I'll 
Well, I'll show you the result. No need to waste time on film. Good times. All right, so basically we got grilling done, and, um, well, let's see what the final product is. Mmm, bird delicious. This should be some good stuff at the party, and this is an end result, and this is the end of this video, and hope you guys enjoyed it. Good times as always here in the 80s Podcast Channel, and see you as always, always. Mmm.